started with me and Phil thinking we would like to get something off the ground and we and um, and, and we thought it'd be great to get John involved as well. Well, we, we've all sort of, in a roundabout way, we've all sort of worked with each other. Obviously, I've worked with John um, on Life on Mars and, and Clocking Off the State of Play. And Mark uh, had appeared in Clocking Off and State of Play and Life on Mars. I think it was Mark and Phil and Suzanne, I think, I'm not too sure. I, I wasn't really involved in it. They just said, do you want to be involved if we get this together? And I said, yeah, of course. You know. We knew we needed a fourth. And then I said, well, what about Max? I hadn't worked with Max before. Mark had on Hustle. Max, I met because he came and did um, a guest spot on Hustle. Uh, so he was like the guest lead for an episode. And I think he played Jamie Murray's husband. And, um, it, and what I noticed about Max was even though he was the guest on it, it, it felt like we were the guests on his show because he sort of took over. It's unusual for Max to do that. So, uh, the idea of working with the other boys was what I was excited about. Max just fitted in like, you know, like a glove. In my bones, I thought Chris would be the right writer for it. Um, and that was it, Chris just, it, we just ran with it. And then when the concept came up and Chris came up with this thing, um, and then we started seeing the first scripts, then we kind of knew it, it, it was it was good. You can always tell off the page. He writes very well for sort of you know embarrassing middle-aged men running around um, trying to be friends again. Um, he, he gets that that dynamic very well. And like I say, he, he he feeds off us and he's very open to to our suggestions. And if we want to say if we want to change something, he's he's always willing to talk about it. And you know, if something comes up in a scene and he likes it, it's him. He's not precious, double precious about all the words which some writers are, you know. And he created it, you know, and, and so there's nobody better. And Suzanne, it's been part of her uh, life now for three years, and so the two of them together have really made it their own, and, and we've just hopefully been a vehicle to, to um, translate all that onto screen. Through through our friendship and through the hopefully the chemistry that, that we've created as, as actors and friends. This has been amazing for me. Um because when, when I walked on set and I had a shaved head and I had all the tats on, I, you know, I, I became Mercedes. He was like, God, you know, I couldn't have pictured anyone more um, in my head, you know, than off paper than to, to be more like her than you. It's, it's unlike anything else. I, I can't, you can't really put a, um, categorise it because it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a black comedy. I mean, very black comedy, but with lots of sort of quite poignant, um, middle-aged angst and, and and lots of things to say about friendship and and um, and separation and and you know where you are in your lives when you meet up after a, a certain time and 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 that's always a, a, an interesting theme you know because that everybody has to deal with that growing apart from friends and maybe you didn't get on with them that well in the first place but you know we're all forced to get together again and 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 because of what happens to us we do become really really close in spite of it all you know. you know I'm kind of like can I just change certain words and Chris has been so great you know we had a moment of me saying oh can I say bloody instead of fricking because I don't really think and he was like well you know as long as it's not middle class and I just looked at him and thought <laughs> really <laughs> I'll try not to be <laughs> Chris has been, been able to begin to anticipate them as both actors and characters so he can, we can now hear the voices very very clearly you know Max does that brilliantly, Mark does that brilliantly, Phil's great doing that, John's great doing that, okay. And, and, and th these are the characters, and so this is, you know, so you're able to really, this, that's a very nice place to get to where you really know each other, you know each other's strengths and, uh, and, and how to sort of um, get the best out of the group dynamic. Uh, well, I just think when we, when, we read, when we read Chris's treatment of you know, his original concept for Mad Dogs, it was just a no-brainer. The other challenge was to make sure that they were, big, they were treated quite democratically as actors, as characters. So we, I think we counted their words, because we knew they'd count their words. <laughs> Who got the most? Seriously. For Series 3, we, we have, um, we've got the original team back. Um, so we're, we're being directed by Adrian Shergold. Um, Tony um, Slater Lynn is the DOP and Finn McGrath is the first and as a team they 
they're just they're, they're like the, the Mad Dogs family, really. Oh, he's he's just uh, he's out there on his own, Adrian. He's a, he's a he's just a fantastic director. He's 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 got his own style. He's got an incredible. Um, um, a cr incredibly laid back energy about him he, he exudes calm throughout the whole set and, and it's, a, it's, it's a joy to come to work with Adrian as well who's I think he's our favourite director all of us we love him well, he's, he's super relaxed he knows what he's doing with, with every shot his team are great I mean Tony Slater Ling is amazing he's um, seems like a really tight knit team here and Adrian's just um He's quite, he's quite off the wall. He's quite, um, you know, he takes risks and he's, he's not scared to, to, to push that, especially when, you know, you're working for a big monster company. I, I don't think he's scared to sort of break the boundaries. And for me, it's, um, that's really nice to work with people like that because you just think, God, you don't really get the opportunity to do that on television. And Adrian's just a, a joy because he's, he's so quick. He edits in his head. He's got the experience and, you know, he, he just comes up with such brilliant ideas. Actors trust him. He gets really right to the heart of what the emotional content of, of a scene is, which, again, for me, Mad Dogs works because it's rooted in some emotional reality about friendships and about love and death and just almost the trivial. And, and I love that, because I think if we hadn't got that right, then, I wouldn't, then everything else is wallpaper. So um, you, you've got to believe in the characters. So I think that's that's where um, Adrian's and James's strength are. Actually, they're both they're both very good directors for actors. Well, they're fantastic to work with. They're very, very, very quick, which means that we can work very fast. They 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 have an instinct about how to do things. They're all good consummate film actors, um, and you, I can I can be very very decisive with them so that they'll actually just go straight for something and do it. I mean, when you were watching a shooting of that uh, African village, there were, I just put four of them on chairs and just track down a conversation track by puppet. And it's a, um, it's a beautifully composed shot from Tony operating. But it meant they had to just do that. That's all I could do. And I only had uh, eight, nine minutes to shoot it in because the light was going to go down like that. And they wanted to shoot it on that light. That was intentional. It was like, so that was, we had to make a decision about how we were going to shoot it, just do it. And they'll do that, they'll just do that, so that's fantastic. Adrian is just, uh, you know, he's just, he's just one of the best and he's at, uh, he's at the peak of his powers. It's, it's a joy to, to come to work when Adrian's directing. Clever that Adrian does, you manage to feel the heat through the screen, you manage to feel their sweat and you manage to feel their panic. What we particularly love about Adrian is that he, he doesn't shoot a lot of coverage, which means in terms of shooting loads of different angles on it and, you know, doing the, uh, loads and loads of takes and so we get to go home earlier and uh, we love Adrian for that. <laughs> oh, it's just nightmare. Wherever we go, Mallorca, nightmare. Cape Town, nightmare. No, it's fantastic. It's just so unbelievably beautiful. It's fantastic. Oh, mate, it's really hot. It's very, very, very hot. It's like a oppressive hot, but um, we were kind of expecting that, and we mustn't grumble because apparently it's freezing in England at the moment. Cape Town's great. Well, it's the first time I've been to South Africa, to Cape Town. I have some friends who have a house here, so, and they, it's their second home. They just they would move here tomorrow if they could. Um, so it, I'm, we're still sort of finding our feet a little bit, you know, we've only been here a sort of week and a half, two weeks, but what I've seen so far is fantastic. Yeah, really diverse. Well, it's very photogenic and the crew are great. I mean, I, everyone says the crew here, South African crew are some of the best they've ever worked with. I've heard that a lot from the actors and from the other crew. And What's intriguing about Cape Town is that it's used by film companies for everything apart from Cape Town and we were coming here our characters are going to live in Cape Town, which is fantastic. That was a good thing about it. If you're going to set something somewhere, and actually what we always said was let's let's take the boys to Cape Town for Cape Town, let's not pretend it's anywhere else, it's Cape Town. So it's a great a great city to film in. It's stunningly beautiful. I love it here, it was great. Who's the best actor? Me. Me. John. John. Who's the most attractive? Me. 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 Max. Who's the most assertive? Max. We can be all quite assertive, but uh, I, uh, 
Phil. Me. Uh, Phil. Look at the smile on his face. None of us. <laughs> We're all miserable bastards. Who? What did they all? What did they all ever say? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Warren. <coughs> depending on who's with him. Mark, depending who's next to him. No, I said Mark. Absolutely. Um, God, me or Max? The others, the others, the two of the others said you, depending on who you're next to. Well, that's libelous. <laughs> <laughs>